Welcome to the NFL Week 12 Sunday Slate Breakdown, where we cover all the games happening on Sunday. I'm your host, Jacob Wayne, joined as always by Cody Malstrom and Will Schwartz. Let's move on to a game that I know we're excited to talk about, and it is the Bills at the Eagles. Eagles currently minus three or minus three and a half, depending on where you're looking at different books. Eagles pulled out that close win over the Chiefs on Monday Night Football in a game where in my opinion, they got outplayed for 15 minutes of game time and then pulled it out at the end. Um, you know, they've been doing that lately, uh, arguably some pretty lucky results on their end. But Cody, curious how you're feeling about this Eagles team as they moved into the favorite role in the Super Bowl odds market. I mean, it's just uh, I, I hit Bills plus three and a half when it comes to these high profile games. I'll always take the probably the dog with the hook and then maybe live trade it out. But yeah, this Eagles team is definitely lucky. Um, in luck rankings, they've been consistently second all year long uh, behind the Steelers and laughably by a wide margin. The Steelers' luck has been <laughs> it's been insane. Um, but no, it more so comes down to the Bills kind of – they don't have an advantage, but they can negate the Eagles' strengths, as in the Bills' front four, phenomenal unit. Um, they generate pressure at the fourth heaviest rate um, while blitzing at a little uh, below average. And that's going to be going against um, the Eagles' offensive line, who's actually been regressing. They're 22nd in Justin Sackery and 13th in Justin Line Yards. This was a unit that was re- uh, widely regarded as was going to be a clear-cut number one offensive line in football. But just injuries here and there have kind of derailed this unit. Um, and then more intriguing yet, on the flip side, uh, the Eagles' front four, probably the most ferocious unit in the league other than maybe the Browns, um, just absolute man-eaters out there. They're going against a uh, Bills offense line who's second in Justin Leonard, second in Justin Sack rate. That that's being able to negate the trenches, the Eagles' advantage in the trenches goes a long ways because this Eagles back end, who we have mentioned a bajillion times, has been a weakness. They don't guard the middle of the offense. And with Josh Allen kind of getting to avoid some of that pressure, I, I think he can put together a clean game again. Yeah, I won't say clean. He can put t- t- get together a good game, good enough to at least stay within this um, the hook of the plus three and a half. So Pond Diggs is going to be uh, wreaking havoc across the middle. It's going to be really intriguing to see how they kind of um, separate their coverage with him, Gabe Davis, and emerging Dalton Kincaid and Khalil Shakir, who I'm very high on. It'll be really interesting. The ground game um, still poised to maybe stumble. I don't know how much help he'll get from there. So that kind of scares me a little. And that's why this is a small play, not a full unit play for me. And then on the other end, uh, the Bills defense. We've been saying this for a while now. We kind of know exactly who they are as they've been dealing with this turmoil with injuries. They can, man, it's it's going to be scary. Um, I don't necessarily know how they can consistently slow down the Eagles. I'm hoping you can help me out here, uh, Wayne. Um, Because the way I'm pegging this is uh, that the Bills have enough offense to stay, to keep it tight, um, at least within this key number of three and a half. But this defense, it's it's, going to be a struggle. Um, Like I said, they can negate the offensive line, at least in that regard. But Jalen Hurts is still going to be able to kind of pick them apart in the secondary. So, yeah, it'll it'll make for an intriguing battle. But with that said, I, I, I don't have it. I, I don't have, like, the Eagles in a dominant fashion. So, yeah, I'll gladly take a three and a half with the Bills. Schwartz, I want to hear your thoughts on this game before I give uh, my cap. No doubt. And it, honestly, is there a more is there a better thing to watch in today's NFL than the Chiefs playing better for 50 minutes and then losing? It's like the ultimate role reversal. It just it made me so happy. Uh, but uh, yeah, I had disagreed with a lot of that. I think the Eagles are going to have no trouble running the football. Honestly, the Bills uh, run defense. It's average by DVOA. It's well below average by P, uh, by PFF. PFF still has Eagles as the top run blocking unit in the league and the third top pass blocking unit in the league. You can't offensive line metrics are incredibly tricky. And I think you just have to, sometimes you have to trust what you've seen. And this is such an experienced, talented offensive line. Uh, they know what they're doing. They're going to definitely, I think the Eagles are going to have a great, great game running the football. Uh, it's, it's, a huge part of what they do. They're going to be at home in front of a probably an unbelievable environment uh, at this point in the season. Uh, Eagles wideouts, I think, can run all over a uh, patchwork defense. Oh, and speaking of the defense um, and all the injuries, sorry, shouldn't have run off the run game yet. Matt Milano's still out. I, I don't know what the plan is to stop Jalen Hurts in the run game without Milano. Um, but yeah, those Eagles wideouts, it's a, it's a really good top two, A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith. I think they're going to have really good opportunities against uh, the Bills' secondary, especially staying underneath. 
Yeah, at the flat three, I think this is a great number. That front seven, I, I, I do think this is – that is what it comes down to. Cody made a very good point that the Bills' offensive line is playing a little bit better, and they will have to hold a very good Eagles uh, pass rush at bay. The Eagles pass rush, uh, they get – pressure at the 13th highest rate in the league, but that's at the 25th highest blitz rate. So they're getting it just with their D line. If they're able to do that, or even if they're, even if they bring heat uh, to Allen, I think Allen is not one of those guys who will just pick apart a blitz every single time you send it. I think if you get pressure, if it, if it gets home, he has a very good chance of making a mistake. Uh, this could be a classic Josh Allen game where we see like three touchdowns and two interceptions uh, or something of that nature. I am a big fan of the Eagles minus three. I got a flat three. Uh, Wayne, did you say it's sitting at like three and a half now? Cause I haven't looked in a second cause I was very happy with my bet, but no, it, yeah, it, it it's, it's to, three and a half. It opened to three and a half and it's been driven down to three. I'm looking at a three and a half right now. That's kind of weird, but I got a three. I'm happy with it. Um, if it keeps going down, I guess, uh, I mean, I guess maybe it's not since this book's back at a, up at a three and a half, but if you find a two and a half, obviously send it, but I, I'm equally, not equally, but I'm quite comfortable with a minus three. I have a full unit, uh, riding on that. I, I, I think this chiefs team is sweet, not chiefs, sorry. Uh, Eagles. I have a lot of belief in what they do. A lot of experience and a lot of continuity. I think this is a great team. And is it, is, I don't know, maybe this is a different conversation, but can we finally call it the nail in the coffin loss? If the bills lose this one, like finally. I don't know. I think six and six would be pretty tough to come back from. It's tough to say because obviously you got the Bengals injury. Well, I guess I mean I mean in one angle, just in terms of the AFC I'm East, like if the, if the Dolphins are able to win today this, this week, I'm just trying to figure out everyone who's still like fighting, um, fighting for a wild card. Well, the Steelers and Browns are both still alive. Uh, the Broncos are fighting for a wild card. All of a sudden, the second team out of the Jaguars and the Texans. It's a pretty tight field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting to me that you bring up continuity for a team that lost both coordinators and just hasn't been as good as it was last season. But the Eagles' play calling to me just hasn't been as as great as it was last year. And I think that game, they, they should have lost to the Chiefs on Monday night. They had 161 yards in the game until nine minutes left in the game. And I think you talk about the Bills' defensive injuries. Like, yeah, for a little bit, that was a major issue. But they're starting to figure it out more and more. And over the past month, they're... 16th in defensive EPA, which isn't great. Eagles are 25th. The Eagles have not been playing good defense. And Patrick Mahomes couldn't take advantage on Monday night because his receivers stink. But the Bills have some great weapons right now. Stephon Diggs is as good as he's ever been. But you also have Dalton Kincaid emerging as a rookie tight end. And Khalil Shakir, who has been awesome in the slot for the Bills. And that's where the Eagles have really struggled to defend, is in the slot against receivers. So, going to be interested in playing some Shakir props in this one. But... I think the Bills have the better quarterback in this game between Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. You talk about Josh Allen's interception problem. Well, his 2.4% turnover-worthy play rate is 30th out of 38 qualified quarterbacks. Hurts is at 18th with a 3.0%. So he's had more turnover-worthy plays this season than Josh Allen. And I think Josh Allen is a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts right now. He's second in PFF passing grades. Jalen Hurts is 11th. So when you're getting the better quarterback, on the, even on the road with the hook, I love this spot for the Bills, and I just think their the reports of their demise were so greatly over-exaggerated, man. Like, yeah, they lost that game to the Broncos, but we talked about it. This is a solid Broncos team that also got pretty lucky to recover some fumbles. The Bills had four turnovers in the game, including an interception, by the way, that bounced off of their receivers' hands in that one. That's not Josh Allen's fault. And the Bills are currently third in both DVOA and DPA on offense. This is one of the best offenses in the NFL. I was a little bit worried when they fired Ken Dorsey and uh, replaced him with Joe Brady, but it, it looks great against the Jets. It's one of the better defenses in the league. So I really have no concerns there. And the Bills still have a very strong defensive line. They're fifth in defensive line yards. And I think they can match up with the Eagles offensive line pretty well here. So when I look at the team with the better quarterback catching a hook at three and a half, I, I love the Bills in this spot. And it's my biggest bet of the week at plus three and a half. At plus three, still like it there. Yeah, I love the Bills in this game. Uh, I think these teams are a lot better in terms of quality than their records indicate. And I think the Eagles have gotten really lucky in some of these games. And I think they're due for some negative regression in a game like this. Um, Cody, I'll circle back to you and see if you agree or disagree on anything I said. No, I, t- I totally agree with everything you said. Um, 
it just like I said, it's all going to come down to uh, the battle in the trenches is how I think this is going to be heavily predicated because the eagle success, that is what it comes from. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to that. And then, like, we just need Josh Allen to throw a clean game where he'll be in a position to do so. So we'll see. Schwartz, anything you disagree with? Well, I just wanted to clarify. When I said continuity, I mean, they have the same core. There hasn't, like, you see Patrick Mahomes losing Tyreek Hill, losing, like, the Chiefs have been so different every year, but the Eagles don't have to deal with that. But obviously, on the other side of the thing, yeah, the Chiefs have had a lot of coaching continuity until this year, and you've seen how that's affected them. So, fair point there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I obviously, you know, I disagree. You knew as you said it that I was going to disagree with the notion that Allen is a better quarterback than Hurts. He's been playing better. Uh, Hurts has been a little banged up, but so is Allen. So, I guess there's no excuse there. I've just, I've always been a bigger fan of Hurts. If we take a long view, I don't have the numbers ahead of me because I, I didn't come uh, prepared for the Allen Hurts debate. Uh, although maybe I should have because this is quite the marquee matchup between quarterbacks. Anyhow, uh, yeah, Allen's gotten the turnover where he plays under control for the most part. They've come out in some big moments. But yeah, I mean, I, I just don't know how I'm supposed to believe that all of a sudden, all these years into the league, just with no major like specific change that would have led to it this season, that just like a, a light bulb switched for him and his turnover where the play rate is just bottomed out. I feel like he's hot right now, which I mean, I guess that factors into this play pretty well, but I, I'm not anywhere close to putting him above Jalen Hurts in any sort of QB index. Although I, I'm go- I have conceded several times that Allen is playing much better football than A, than his stats indicate, and B, than he usually plays. So good for him. I don't think it's going to happen at the link in November, though. Yeah, going to be an interesting one. Um, yeah, I, we're, real quickly, I wanted to just mention that turnover worthy play rate, 2.4%. That's down from 4.2% last year. So significant, significant difference there. And yeah, yeah I, and- I do I do think that at this point in his career, Josh Allen can continue to get better as a quarter. I mean, why not? Like it's just so precipitous to drop off. And it's and we've seen it. We it should have been one of like the first leaps he made. And we, you look back and it's a huge drop from last year. Obviously, looking at two years, you don't know which is the outlier. I think if we go back and back and back, the last year number is going to be the one that's that you're going to see a lot more numbers like. So, I mean, good for him. I'm not saying it's impossible that he could change at this point. I just don't know why I should, like, based on as much, like, I, he hasn't it, he hasn't been better for long enough that I think he's just this completely changed quarterback. Uh, maybe if he does it through the rest of the season and maybe postseason, we can have a talk. But uh, he's still, to me, he's still at least, I'm not going to call him a turnover machine, but he's definitely prone to making those mistakes when he's put in adverse situations. And I think we've talked, I mean, we all know the talent of the Eagles uh, defensive front, so this could be one of those situations. But, hey, you're you're right. He's been playing great football, and he has the ability to bring the Bills really competitive in this one. Yeah, last point I'll make before we move on. Um, career low, average depth of target, career high, adjusting completion rate. What that indicates to me is he is not forcing the ball downfield in the tight windows. He's taking the checkdowns when they're there. James Cook has become a much more involved part of the passing game. Dalton Kincaid, Khalil Shakir, a lot of underneath passing, which is how you maintain efficiency in the NFL and avoid turnovers. So, yeah, I do think Josh Allen has improved this season. So that's that's kind of where I stand on this game. But that'll do it for us. Um, hope you guys enjoy this Sunday slate of games. Check out our Sunday night football and Monday night football videos as well. Please like and subscribe. Get notified when all of our videos come up on the YouTube page. We'll catch you guys next week.